Hi, welcome to the workshop. Now this week we're going to continue to upgrade the suspension on Neil's Rally Mini. Got to say, so far this job is rather fighting us somewhat. We've only managed to achieve a little bit of extra caster and really the refurbishment of a rusty subframe. Only to find that when all the suspension went back on, we now have to relieve that subframe of some of its metal just to make sure everything fits okay. And that is where my job today starts. I've got to say, with all this rain, I'm quite chuffed to be working indoors today. Now, with the subframe now back out of the car, it's much easier to see quite what's going on with the metal I'm going to have to remove from either side. But something's been bothering me. On this side, it's sort of quite a big patch that needs to be removed. On this side, it's a bit smaller of a patch. And you'd think they'd be symmetrical. So I've kind of checked it twice and checked it a third time, but it does seem to be that this one is going to be bigger than that one. So now when you start looking at the subframe itself, it begins to get a little bit more clear as what's going on. You've got these sort of bosses on either side, and obviously that's how they bolt to the chassis. And in the boss, there's a hole. Now the hole on this side isn't concentric at all. On this side, it's kind of nearly concentric, but not quite there. But then if you start looking at the bits of metal underneath on either side, you can see that there, this piece is almost flush with the boss, whereas here there's a bit of an overlap. So basically nothing is in quite the same place symmetrically on either side. And then you start looking at this sort of shorter edge and this wider edge and then realise that actually this is the same part that kind of spun round. So it's sort of never going to be symmetrical. So I think when it's put together on the production line and the robots get involved to drill the holes, they're not too worried about how this is going to go together as long as it's pretty much in the right place. And then the accuracy comes when they drill those final holes before it gets assembled. So that means that when I do my repair jobs, if you like, or my modification, it's probably better to not have them symmetrical because I want to make sure that I remove as little metal as possible, but just enough to make the suspension move. And so basically there's a bit more material on this side that needs to be removed than that. It's going to be as simple as that. Now what I want to do first of all is actually think about the metal that I'm going to be putting back in. So this is about two mil thick, so I'm going to use exactly the same steel to put back in once I've cut out what I'm removing, but I now need to accommodate that thickness in the hole I'm removing. So I'm just going to make these holes or this markings just a bit bigger to accommodate the extra two millimetres, and then I can start chopping away and then start thinking about filling it back in again. So my idea is to try and copy some of the design cues from the subframe. So you can see where you have these two parts of the subframe coming through this way, and then there's another piece of metal in there with a little sort of overlap, if you like, so you can have a nice amount of surface area for the weld. So I'll do exactly the same thing, but kind of the other way. So the idea is I'm going to put a bit of metal down through here, a little bit of an overlap, so I actually get to weld underneath there. And that's just going to add a bit more strength, having removed away this kind of interesting compound curve. So what I need to do for that then is accommodate the two millimetres of material I'm going to be using, but also I want to give it a bit of a tolerance. I mean, obviously the pen isn't exactly accurate, but it was kind of right on the edge of where the bolt and the suspension upright were actually hitting this subframe. So I think I'll just give it a bit more space, so maybe kind of four or five mil. And frankly, by the time I've got in there with a the grinder, it's going to be a little bit on the rough side. So I'm just going to just sketch round and add this sort of extra band, as I say, of about four or five mil of material. And the idea is that once I've actually gone around the whole thing, I'll start cutting it out. And then when I'm pretty happy that I've removed enough material, I'll just put in a dummy middle belt, put the suffering back onto the car, and then I can actually check for sure before I do any welding that it's all going to be clear. There we go. So that just gives them my extra little border. I'll do the same thing on the other side.
Well, that's the first one. Okay, so now we have the other side removed as well. So I can now start fettling with a flap disc, just kind of dressing the area, getting it nice and clean, ready for our bit of metal. Right, so I've now got the holes where I want them and I've prepared the edges ready for the welding. So now I just need my next bit of replacement metal. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of masking tape, as always. So just a nice simple way of getting our pattern. Just use that hard edge of the metal underneath. Because again, I want to just go around the outside of this to add a little extra. But this gives me a really good idea of what we're looking at. I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to pop that down. Like so, again, trying to accommodate the curve at the bottom. There'll also be a little bit of a curve on the inside where the bolt is actually going to swing around. So next, I stick the masking tape onto the metal. I need to make sure I've got a good enough spare edge. I don't want a crazy border, but just enough. Obviously, I'll trim this once I've welded it into place. That gives me something to work on. First fit is looking good, so now I need to persuade it into position. Now before I weld anything into position, I thought I'd just check for a final fit. So the hole itself, we've got loads of room, that's great. This is on the lower setting of the suspension, of course. Now I'll just put our bit of metal in place, look at that. And so even before I've trimmed the edges, it's fitting nicely. So now what I'm just going to do is, I'm just going to lower the car. So now with the wheel in a raised position, so the bolt touches the top or goes past the top of the subframe. You can see, again, we've still got plenty of room. I'll put my little plate in position. Again, got loads of clearance, but I might just modify this little tiny bit just here, just give it a little bit more weight, just to be absolutely safe. But now that's done, I can do the other side, then I can crack on with the welding. So on the lower setting, the hole is good. I'm just gonna put my little plate in position. So, and then let's try that again. So we've got loads of room, but you know what, just to be super safe, I might just trim a little tiny bit off that top corner, but I think really that's not a bad first go.
Whew, right then. So these are now done, which is great. So I need a lick of paint, and then we can get them back onto the car. Wow, Ed, that's amazing. That's a work of art. Well, thank you, sir. I think I've done enough damage, so perhaps you want to take over. Certainly. Enjoy your tea. Thank you very much. <laughs> So now our subframe is perfectly modified and nicely painted, thanks to Neil, we can now start putting things like the steering rack and the anti-roll bar back into position, ready to go back onto the car. And so of course for that we need to actually then undo these little bits and pieces. So, quite loud. Now you've got sort of replacement bolts, almost all the bolts we're going to be putting everything back on with, haven't you? That's right, yeah, they recommend putting new ones in, but uh, I've also got a great idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get these bolts out when the, the subframe's up on the car, yeah. so if on an event and we bend one of these arms or get some damage, we yeah, have to drop much. the whole subframe off. Yeah. So and that's not going to be easy to do in a ditch, is it, let's face it, or even in the No, in no, the, and, the and for the service crew, yeah, you yeah. know, it's just going to take far too long to do. So the idea is to replace these with nuts and bolts. Cool. Um, high tensile, obviously, to, re yeah. to re get the strength back in. That's really cool. Um, but, um, so that yeah. means we need to drill out the holes first? Yes. Now, that's a great idea, actually. And it means by doing both of them, I guess it's consistent, it's easy, you know, the mechanics know where to look. That's right, yeah. The, um, the least you have to think in a pressured situation, the better. So if yeah. you can make it easy, then... No, that's a good idea. And also, I mean, I think there's a risk that the, the threads could get damaged over time if you keep changing and keep adding bits and pieces. At least this way, if there's a damage, you can just throw the bolt away and start again. Can't that's you? right. They're designed for robots to put them together. So because they just bang them in, uh, yeah. cut their own threads as they go in, they don't have to line anything up. But uh, we're in a different situation. Well, so. You don't have two-handed robots that often, I guess. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> right then, so... We've had a number of questions about the Mini, but also directed to Neil himself. And the very first one is from Tough Ancient Spark. And he's basically saying it probably would have been better to replace the whole of the subframe rather than actually weld it up and repair it. But, so I guess there's quite an easy answer to that one, isn't there? How much was one of these when it's new? Yeah, they're, they're about £800, so that's <laughs> quite a lot of money. <laughs> well, there we go. That answers the question. Obviously, it's much more economical at this stage to actually repair it. Now, of course, being a rally car, there's a chance you're going to bend it at some point anyway, isn't it? Yeah, I hope not but let's just call it a prototype. Fair enough. <laughs> We've had loads of people talking about your clever dashboard, and there's someone called FB who's actually got an R56 Cooper S, and they're really intrigued about your, you know, where to get it from, basically, because you know, they can't find it on the internet. Uh, right, well, there's only one at the moment, and it's in that car. OK. <laughs> um, I built the housing for it and uh, write the software, C++ and OpenGL. Um, but uh, I'd not thought about creating more so far. But you could. I, I guess I could do, yeah. So yeah. they could be for sale, maybe. They could Possibly. be customisable, perhaps, if they really wanted it. There's probably a bit more work to do, but if somebody wants to get in touch about doing that sort of thing, then okay. yeah. Okay, well, sure check we the description, and hopefully you'll be able to find a link, and then that will take you to Neil, and then maybe you could be the proud owner of a CBM YNIL. <laughs> Right, well, how are you getting on with these long bolts? Because I'm nearly in there, but I think because of the tension, it's getting a bit tricky. Yeah, they don't line up particularly well, so I think we've got to split the ball joint first and uh, get, get these set. on and then do that. OK, fair enough, that makes sense. I think once they've been in there and moving around a lot, I think we'll be OK. But if we stand up at this end, like so... Now, 
I think this is a really good idea because obviously these, so these are basically 10.9 volts. So normal volts often you'd find on the car be like 8.8, and these have got even higher tensile strength. So yeah, I've got them to match the uh, original bolts that are also 10.9. You can oh, that's just see cool. the, Oops, the marking on the top of the, uh, the that bolt head. That that's great. Yeah, so, they, so you know that they're going to be strong enough for the job. Yeah. But the main thing is now, because the nuts are on the top, you actually disconnect them or undo them, sort of hopefully in the pits or whenever's required. But I guess the next thing we're going to have to do is actually do these up to the right torque, can't we, to make sure that they're done up tightly enough to hold everything together because yes. I guess you know certainly the front suspension arms would be ashamed to lose those as you're going along. <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd rather keep them attached. So, so the torque on this is what 160? Yeah. Right let's bolt the ball joints back up again Yeah. so we can start putting so things back together again properly. But the other thing of course to think about is we want to make sure that we use the right torque when we're doing it up because this is the last time hopefully that we're going to do this on this install. Now these have to be done up to a certain torque and then they've got to be turned an extra 90 degrees, I think it's about 80 newton meters. So let's do these basically finger tight just to hold everything in place then we'll do them up properly when they're actually on the car and the subframe isn't flapping around. Right, so it's now time to set up the final adjustable feature of Neil's new suspension and that is the spring kind of preload if you like or the pre-tensioning of the spring on top of the damper and you can see you've got this threaded part here with these nuts and obviously that's how we're going to adjust them and get it set and I believe there is a kind of a standard setting just to get the car moving. Yes the, uh, the springs are 170 long as standard. Okay. They say to compress it by eight millimetres Okay. So that leaves it's us. Not very much, is it? But I no, guess it's no, like all the no, difference. no. But uh, but so we set it to that on here, and yeah. uh, good to go. Cool. And then a little bit later on, what we're going to do is actually then set the car up, make sure that the corner weights are all exactly the same, so we end up with a nice contact patch. And so there's no point doing these up. It's just a case of just getting them to the right kind of position, just to give us a starting datum. So I guess we should crack on with that. So first thing is, we've just got to get these nuts off the end, haven't we, off the turrets? So just undo these adjustable camber tops, so pull that there, take that off there, and pop the spring into position. So it just sits on this little collar here, and pop that back into position. So the first thing is you need to tighten this right up. So So what we need to do now is just basically wind this nut all the way along and it's just going to compress the spring. So start getting some spanner action in there. So how are we doing? So we're going for 162. Now these spanners are designed, obviously you'd be able to do this on the car as well. So of course you can then set it up between stages or whatever you need to do. Although you shouldn't really be messing with this between stages, I guess. No. <laughs> well, I suppose actually, if it depends, if you have a, a different, you know, co-driver or something, you shouldn't be swapping co-drivers between stages. <laughs> it feels like you damage them even, doesn't it? So I would say that is about one six two exactly, which is quite nice. So that's that one done. So if we do the other one, and we're there. Right. So the dampers are now ready to go back onto the vehicle, but the last thing we have to worry about is reinforcing the top of the struts. So basically this big chunky bit of metal goes on the top of that, but so effectively sandwiches the car's metal in between, and then basically sort of stops it from getting squished if you kind of really get to the end of the travel. So if you, I guess when you're doing a jump or something and you land really, really hard, once the suspension's run out of travel, all that energy is going to go and try and push through the car, and this is trying to help stop that being a problem. Yeah, I mean, there have been cases before with the dampers actually punching through the bonnet. Wow. So uh, okay. yes, anything we can do to try and avoid that better. Fair enough. Cool. And I guess the next stage up would maybe to weld a plate in or whatever it is or reinforce the whole thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the, the works cars completely rebuild those towers, right. um, but there's 
So you just keep money. chucking money at this yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. So we're just going to get started and then we go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully this will be enough. So. Cool. Well, let's crack on. Let's get it on to the vehicle. Far too many washers going on here. I'm just going to make sure we've got maximum negative camber still because of course we want to find out how much we can actually dial in. And we're probably going to adjust this later on so I won't go crazy tight. Yeah. And then just make sure that I've got this, this little relief here. It's a nicely CNC machine bit of material. So, same on the other side. So now our new coilover is in position. The last, well, nearly last part to do is actually now pop it into the hub itself. So just wiggle it in place and then pop the bolt in like so and it still misses our subframe, so at least that modification seems to have worked, which is good. Well, that is looking great. So last few things, connect up all the steering bits and then we're nearly there. Right, we're literally just going to almost finger tight them into position because of course we're going to have to take them off again when we actually come to adjust the camber. But for now, they're good enough to now find out what camber and what caster we currently have in our new setup. Turn it on, and we're just going to centre the bubble. Ooh, one second. Okay, and then we're going to just set it to camber. So at the moment, in the zero or the central position, we're looking at minus three on the camber. Fantastic. So that gives us some capacity to dial it back to about minus two and a half. Cool. Okay, yeah, so we've got a little bit of extra spare, which is nice. Yep, so, okay, yep. so now if we go so about 20 degrees backwards we're looking at I'll just set the bubble again so we're looking at minus 0.1 so really okay. we want positive camber in this case but we're not that far off so if we're going to adjust it to 2.5 in the center we'll end up then that should about, bring us of, back that's yeah. perfect yeah so we should end up with sort of about positive about 0.5 so that's great so then go forwards to 20 as well that's cool, and then, so we now got minus 3.8. Excellent. So that's a, a big improvement. Before we went from minus 1.2 to minus 1.5, oh, adding wow. the extra caster has taken us from 3 to 3.8. That's nice. Okay, so, uh, cool. So yeah, a, a bigger improvement on turning. So our camber is successful. Yes. Which is very exciting. So yes. then while we're here, what we'll do is we'll now just make sure that we just put that onto caster. And then we're just going to zero that. Okay, like so. so now if we now 
turn it, I guess, 40 degrees, I suppose, all the way, so all the way past zero, back to the other side. That's a bit tidy, but that's it, perfect. And I'll just recenter that. And we now have on our caster, this is where we get the drum roll, very exciting. So 5.2. Excellent. So what did we have before? We had 3.3, .3, so that's Loads near more. enough at two degrees, which is what they said on the packet. That is fantastic. So it's actually worked out right. We've done it correctly, but more to the point, we've now got two degrees more caster. Yeah. And it actually looks right as well. When you actually look at the, the, the coilover in, in the sort yeah, of wheel arch, it looks you, more like a rally car, right? That's right, yeah. When you look at the World Rally Championship cars, the top of the field, all of them have got the front dampers Brilliant. attacking the... Uh, the, the track and uh, because of the positive caster. That is fantastic, what a result. And the best bit is that the tyre hasn't actually clashed with any of the other wheel arch, which is the real a result that we hadn't actually checked yet either. So everything seems to go on. We've got better camber, we've got better caster. All we have to do now is all the work on the rear end. And that is a job for another day. <laughs>